An object is launched with an initial speed of v0 at an angle of alpha above the horizontal. It lands at the same elevation as its launch. How far does it travel horizontally? This is known as the range equation, a pretty classic result of ballistic physics. We know our acceleration is zero in the x direction and minus g in the y direction. The initial x component of velocity is v0 cosine alpha. The initial y component of velocity is v0 sine alpha. So the velocity at any time t in the x direction is just the same, v0 cosine alpha, and in the y direction is v0 sine alpha minus gt. For x component of position, we just have our initial x plus the speed times the time. For the y, we've got acceleration, so it's the initial position plus the initial velocity times time minus the acceleration term, one half gt squared. Where we're gonna solve this problem is we're gonna find the time it takes to land and then use that time and the x equation to find out where it is when it landed and from that figure out how far it went. So to find the time to the landing, we're going to use this y equation, solve it for the time that the projectile returns to its launching position. So that's when y and y naught are the same. We end up with this, solve for t, well, factor of t comes right out. We've got a factor of t in both terms. So we have t times this v naught sine alpha minus one half gt. The possible solution t equals zero is not of interest, that tells us basically when we launched, we launched at time zero. So we're interested in is this one, this one tells us when we landed. So this solves algebraically one half gt equals v naught sine alpha. Multiply both sides by two over g, and we get two v naught sine alpha over g as the time. Let's check that the units work, this actually gives us time. If in, the, in the numerator we have velocity units, in the denominator we have acceleration units. Velocity divided by acceleration is meters per second times seconds squared per meter. The meters cancel out and we're left with seconds, which is just what we want. To find the horizontal range, we use this time in the x equation. So what we're looking for is d, which is x at landing, minus x at the start, d. And so that turns out to be v naught cosine alpha times t. That's the horizontal speed times the time to land. We just plug that in, this t sub l, into this equation. So we get two v naught squared, because we have v naught, uh, two factors of v naught, now over g. Now we've got v naught squared over g times two sine alpha cosine alpha. We could stop there, or we can simplify this further by recognizing that this is a trigonometric identity. Two sine alpha cosine alpha is equal to the sine of two alpha. That's most convenient for us if we want to find out what the maximum horizontal range is. This is going to happen when the sine of two alpha is one, and that occurs when two alpha is 90 degrees. So that means that alpha is 45 degrees maximally. Or we could just crunch through with the calculus, treating it as a max min problem, that we have a maximum value of d when the derivative of d with respect to the angle alpha is zero. So let's find that, where d is v naught squared over g sine two alpha, take the derivative of that with respect to alpha, well the v naught squared over g stays the same, and then we have the derivative of sine of two alpha, well that's gonna be the two times the cosine of two alpha, which is what we have here. Solve that for alpha when the derivative is zero, we're left with cosine of two alpha equals zero. So two alpha is the arc cosine of zero. The arc cosine of zero is 90 degrees. And so then we have alpha being half of that, or 90 degrees over 45 degrees, which is just what we knew.